to seeing you here, Tyra. Oh, it's great to see you too, Steve. Oh, are you talking in a British Sorry. accent today? I just got back from British Columbia, so I'm little. <laughs> you know, that's not England, right? <laughs> yes, but I heard a lot of people with British accents there. Oh. And people speaking French and people with Canadian You accents. talked with people who Had... speak in an English accent. Oh, absolutely. They're from Canada. Absolutely. Wonderful. Oh, I heard it was like a big melting pot of all cultures. I love that. We're going to get to that a little later. We're going to get to Tyra's big trip to BC. You went to Vancouver? I, I went Victoria. to Victoria. Victoria. Wrong right. city. Sorry. They're both wonderful <laughs> cities. We love our Canadian viewers. Hello, Canada. Welcome back to Sounds <laughs> On Episode 19. Almost at 20. Almost at 20. Next We're week, we will there. be at 20. We will mm -hmm. so be there. We're almost there. We want to start off this episode with a, something a little bizarre, something that's been happening around the Puget Sound region that is bizarre to me, and I would assume for lots of other people as well, Steve, staged car crashes leading up to car jackings. Haven't ever heard of this until now, and it's for some reason, it's becoming like this recent trend of these car crashes being staged and it's an actual carjacking. So essentially what is being done here is carjackers intentionally crash into someone's car, usually the back end, or maybe they bump it, so then they can steal the vehicle. And by our account, there's been at least 12 of these type of incidents in Seattle, Bellevue, and Renton. And I think one of the most earliest ones that we heard about in the last couple of weeks, I think we have some video of this. So this is a Seattle couple sharing some rear end camera video here. And what you're seeing is this crash on Myers Way in Seattle's Highland Park neighborhood. Uh, this happened last month. So what you're seeing here right here is a light colored Hyundai approaches the back of that couple's car, hits the bumper, kind of taps the bumper. And the couple keeps driving to a nearby gas station before pulling out. As and one would. Yeah. I mean, I think anyone would right. in that situation. Right. And the guy says there was three people in the car that hit him. They apparently took off once the guy got out of his car to sort of confront him. So scary. It's terrifying. And I think, you know, one time is enough. But you mentioned 12. At least, at a, least dozen. a dozen. Yeah. That's one too many. Uh, terrifying pattern for reals. Because if you get in a car crash or a fender bender or something like that, you usually, you know, you pull over. That's your first instinct. You yeah. change information with the driver. Right. But in this case, it's like you always have to keep your head on a swivel. Like, how are you? How do you know mm -hmm. if it's real or not? What yeah. do you do? Yeah. And, you know, do you just sit in the car and you call 911 right away and just not exchange information with the driver? How do you know yeah. if, you know, I'm sure the carjacker can sort of act non suspiciously mm -hmm. to make it seem like everything's normal except you've just been hit. But, like, how do you react in that situation? I don't know. I don't know. I feel like for me now, knowing that this pattern's happening, I would just keep on driving and may call 911 while I'm driving. I don't know if that's the right move. I don't know. But I feel like safety first. Yeah. And I don't want to be tricked. Um, a lot of people are talking about this online, though. I do want to take a look here at some of the comments. Um, lots of people. Oh, Marjorie Taylor Green, ex-husband. This person, not the real Marjorie oh, Taylor Green, okay. but that's just their username. All right. Um, they also say to call 911 right away and keep driving. Mm -hmm. Tell dispatch you suspect this is a staged carjacking and that they're following you. Say what street you're on. That was my first uh, kind of solution to this. But SP or as not SPD, but Bellevue Police, they're offering some tips as well. Um, first and foremost, stay alert and stay aware. Be conscious of your surroundings. So yeah, keep your head on a swivel. That's what my dad always says. It's mm -hmm. like when you're by yourself, keep your head on a swivel. Always know where, uh, you know, who's behind you on the side of you. Plan your route. Use well-lit populated roads. That's a good tip. Lock your doors and windows. I mean, that's kind of a no-brainer. And, and I'm yeah. one of those people where I like get in the car and I will distinctively lock the doors right away if they don't have automatic locks mm. i'm just kind of like paranoid in that way maybe that's because of you know almost two decades of covering news events where yeah. people get carjacked and that sort of thing it's just like one little extra step that can sort of help protect you mm -hmm. and then just kind of trust your instincts right if you sort right. of feel like something is a little off mm -hmm. you might suspect something is happening or the situation's a little bit weird trust your gut because you know oftentimes in those situations your gut is right and then if you need help from police, call them right away. You might have, you might be there a while waiting yeah. for them to arrive, but I think it's better to be safe than sorry in those situations. For sure. Listen to your gut. And yeah. you see something, say something. I think That's... there's one more after the um, conversation oh, there. Avoid yeah. confrontations. Oh, this is a good one, uh, especially in road rage incidents. Mm -hmm. OMG. 
If yeah. you see aggressive behavior on the roads, do not engage or challenge. Call police as soon as possible. Your car is not worth your life. Yeah. Completely agree with this one because you just don't know what other people are capable of or what other people, I don't know, if, if they're like that, that, those people involved in that crash on Myers Way, there were three other people in the car. I mean, that's three against two. Yeah. And we've even heard of incidents where things like this are actually turning fatal. Like right. there was a, a fatal one that happened in Black Diamond. You know, as we mentioned, they've happened in Seattle, uh, West Seattle, we've heard of Bellevue, Renton. Mm -hmm. And it's like becoming this new trend that, you know, it make, sort of freaks me out to think what I would do in that situation. I don't I know. Did, what no. would you do? I, I don't know. I think I would just, yeah, like I said, call 911 and keep on driving. Trust my instinct if it feels off, um, which is wild because that's completely the opposite of what you're told to do. Yeah. You, know, you don't want to leave a scene or you don't want to, you know, I guess a hit and run incident. You don't want that. It's not a lot. It's not, it's not legal. Yeah. So um, this is terrifying. Uh, what would you do, though? Let us know in the comments. And is there a solution to this type of incident? I don't know. Like, I, I don't know. What solutions can you come I don't up know. with? I don't know. How do you stop people from being bad menaces? I don't know. And I know mm -hmm. that police have been saying that they think teenagers are involved in a lot of these incidents, too. Yeah. And we've heard, you know, Kias and Hyundais sort of being a target, which have also been a target for these other types of crimes that have been used with, you know, smashing them into businesses like pot shops and, yes. and that sort of thing. So it's like it just keeps getting stranger and more mm -hmm. scary i feel like to, yeah. to be out on the roads well let us know what you think yeah all right hey we know it's tough financial times for all of us yes. obviously we've been dealing with inflation rising inflation seems like everything is costing more these days gasoline stuff you buy at the grocery store that sort of thing so are there things that you do to sort of save money and are they tips that maybe are seattle specific so mm. We came across this interesting post on Reddit and wanted to share it with you. So let's take a look at this post here. This person basically says, what, let me get my little thing out of the way there. What are your Seattle specific money saving tips? Some examples, don't shop at Safeway and take the light rail to the airport. Those seem kind of simple, right? And they're, hmm. we're specifically talking about Seattle area. So there was a couple of interesting ones that I came across to maybe save some bucks. Always check the receipt at restaurants to see if tip has already been included. That's one of those because we know a lot of add, you know restaurants will add the automatic twenty percent. Oh yeah, gratuity, and then you know you don't want to necessarily, or maybe you do want to give an extra tip on top of that. Um, look for Safeway and QFC deli items that get super discounted when they're close to the expiration date. Great mm -hmm. for a quick lunch. Mm -hmm. This light dragonfly has some really good ones. Someone already said free museum day, but certain banks also offer free entry to certain museums on certain weekends for customers. Um, a lot of mentions about public libraries that yeah. have programs for getting free passes for stuff. Or free audiobooks. Free you can audiobooks. Cancel Audible and get a library card. Yep. Um, King <laughs> County Libraries does stuff like sergers and sewing machines. Yeah, uh, their maker spaces. Seattle Tool Library knows a really good place to save on tools if you're doing a project. Blah 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 blah. Lots of good parking tips too. Mm -hmm. Amazon owned parking lots in downtown and South Lake Union free after 4 p.m. on weekdays and free all day on weekends. I do that all the time. I do that all the time too. I know I have a friend that kind of lives somewhat close to one of those areas, and I think when I drove in the first time, I was like. Wait, free parking lot on the weekends? This doesn't seem like it's true, but it's true. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. There's some funny ones in here, too. Someone said, instead of saving up for a house, invest in a relationship with someone who can afford a house. <laughs> Sounds like a little gold digger. Yeah. There was another one. I don't know if I can <laughs> I like find it, it out here, too. That was uh, It was kind of shady in a way. It's another parking one. So I don't know if you've ever been to that Target downtown. Oh, I already know. Yep, I okay. do this. Yeah. I do this a lot, okay actually you buy something expensive enough for ticket validation for parking i think it's like 20 bucks it's 14 dollars now because I, I did it yesterday oh it did okay yeah. all right so it's dropped a little bit just make sure to return the item within one to two months and boom you get yourself free parking in downtown for a couple of hours okay returning the items a little extra i don't do that i feel like you always need something from target so yes. maybe i'll get like let's say i need i don't know i just did this i went to target i wanted to park there to go to Pike Place Market. And I was like, oh, I'm going to make tacos for dinner. So I got like taco shells and some makeup remover or something. Yeah. And that covered the parking. So technically it's free parking because I was able to buy stuff that I needed already for the household. 
but still spending money. Yeah. You're spending money, but at least it's not just for parking. I don't know. And this is, I found the one. So this is ad comprehensive 78, 79 that posted that one about the target parking lot. I don't know if I would make the effort to go to a store, buy some stuff that I don't need just to get the free parking so you can do something else and then have to go return those items. That just seems like way too like much the work. returning is like buy something that you may actually use a tooth, a new toothbrush, toilet paper. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Um, but this is great. I think we should make this like a weekly thing. I think we should. How too. did you save money this week? And what, how can you share it with the rest of us? And obviously we're talking about Seattle specific, but if, yeah. you know, Tacoma, Everett, something you do up in Bellingham on the peninsula, whatever, to sort of save money, there has to be these little things that yeah. really add up and can lead to some cost savings in these tough times. Mm -hmm. I think it's brilliant. I'm all about the free activities, the mm -hmm. hiking or, you know, walking around. A yeah. I'm all about it too. So how was your weekend, Tyra? My weekend was great. Oh, 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 here comes the accent again. Oh, no. Here it comes. Oh, no. Can't, can't. <laughs> My English accent is actually terrible. Can you do a French accent? Um, I can't. I can't. Oh. But Bonjour. I... <laughs> Bonjour. Comment That's good. Parlez-vous français? Oh, see? Okay, keep going. Speak a little French. Okay. Oui, oui. Um, I went to Victoria, British okay. Columbia. Took the clipper from Seattle. It was a great time. Um, like I mentioned at the beginning of the show, gigantic melting pot of just different cultures i heard so many different accents and languages yeah. i sat at an irish pub for a little bit steve and had irish coffee and there were people who were irish of irish descent there oh, cool. celebrating their culture it was just it was it was phenomenal um i have some pictures actually was this your first share. time up there first time oh. first time oh i thought i had pictures oh yes i do here they are can you see them they're almost popping up there they are this is me in the Chinatown area. Mm, it was raining. It. That's me on the clipper. Beautiful sunset coming back to Seattle. See the hair Seattle. blowing too. Ooh, look at that shot with the flowers. Yes, in the parliament building there in the waterfront. Um, it was just cool. It really felt like, you know, you were in another place. That's me and my cousin in front of the uh, clipper there. Did you do the time. Empress? We walked through the Empress. Okay. I have already done high tea a few times, oh, so I didn't me. feel like I needed to mm. do it at the Empress. But okay. the Empress is beautiful. But we bring this up because uh, this is something that's also been trending online. People talking about uh, Seattle being a friendlier city than places like Vancouver. I don't know if Victoria was mentioned, but this is a Reddit thread. Mm -hmm. And people are asking if Seattle is friendlier than Vancouver. I've been to Vancouver as well, Steve, and I thought people were really nice there. See, I have I have always had a great time in Vancouver, and I think the last time that I went there was I think it was pre pandemic. Okay, and was kind of a a weekend trip up there. Also went up there during the 2010 Winter Olympics, and just felt so welcoming. But I think there's yeah. kind of this thought when you're putting Americans versus Canadians that Canadians are nicer than Americans. Hmm. We tend to be a little bit more warm. I think Americans tend to be a little bit more in your face oh, or vocal, maybe a little bit th mean. than Canadians, you know? So this is a post on Reddit, Seattle Friendly than Vancouver. And this person says, maybe it was because I was wearing a Mariner's hat, but do you find people in Seattle friendlier than in Vancouver? Hmm. What I was surprised by this is a lot of people in the comments were saying they think Americans are nicer than Canadians. Interesting. Yes. I don't know. I met really nice people in um, Victoria over the weekend and when I took my trip up to Vancouver, that was earlier this year, people were also really friendly, really welcoming. I think friendly is a very, I mean, it's one thing to be kind, but it's another thing to be friendly. Mm -hmm. So I'm not exactly sure what this person's experience was. This person that commented says, it depends what you mean by friendly. So what your definition of that? But they said, I found Americans are more likely to strike up random conversations in places like a grocery lineup, a bar, a coffee shop, that sort of thing, when you're sort of waiting for a service mm. and you're, you know, sitting next to Joe Schmo, you're like, hey, where are you from? Or whatever. Americans are more likely to do that, apparently. Mm. Well, let us know what you think. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, like I said, I visited both cities uh, twice now. Um, those are the only places I've been in Canada. And even in those times, I was around so many American tourists. So I don't know. I was, I, maybe I'm not able to tell. That's really interesting though. And it kind of makes me happy reading this thread for people to too. say like Seattleites are nice because Go Seattle USA. has a reputation of, you know, being a little cold. Money stuff 4431 says, I lived in Seattle, now live in Vancouver. Both cities are unfriendly. Ah! <laughs> Seattle freeze. 
Yeah, Seattle Freeze. Great, great dinosaur. Dinosaur. Every time I go to Seattle, I have an amazing time. Just go down to random bars and clubs. People will strike up a conversation, invite me to sit, talk, or drink with them. Interesting. Generally have a good time when they're doing. Well, hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I'd be curious to hear your experience, though. Are we really going to pit it? Like our Canada neighbors against Americans? No. Is that what we're doing? No, we're just talking about what's trending online. Oh, okay. We're not here to spark up. Are we trying to start a violence? fight? No. <laughs> no. We don't want to do that. We want peace amongst everyone, right? Exactly. Exactly. Yes. All right. I'll be sticking around here in town this weekend, Steve. Uh, Victoria was awesome, but I'm kind of excited for a Seattle weekend. The fall season has mm. settled in. It's rainy. It's cold. We've already got our sweaters on. Do you, does it have you thinking about Halloween already? Absolutely. I'm already for the fall events. Are you one of those people that like plans your costume out weeks in advance? Or are you kind of like a last minute person throughout the uh, Both. I used to really be a pre-planner, but now I feel like post-COVID, I'm just always scrambling at the okay. last minute to find something to wear. It feels <laughs> like you? there's a lot of pressure. Yes, to be something creative and also fun. Yeah. And I don't really like things that are too scary. I'm like the, the type of person that would dress up as a cat for Halloween. There is so much scary <laughs> stuff that's going on. Let's run through some of the events that you can actually check out this weekend. First one is up, and this is Booze and Bites Ooh. VIP Night. This is down in Buckley. This is on Friday at 6.30. This is, this is a haunted dinner party, Ooh. which I think might be enjoyable. A spectacular H uh, VIP Halloween event. Um, this is at a farm, so Maris Farms, Haunted Woods. You get a dinner with haunted characters, beverage, alcoholic beverage, haunted woods walk. That sounds fun. Mm -hmm. I like Take that photos. it's a dinner party. I do too. Ooh, okay. And when is this one happening? This one is on Friday. It starts okay. at six thirty, and you can buy tickets on Facebook. It looks like amazing. Mm -hmm. And we have another event actually in Pierce County as well. Tacoma. This one looks scary. Mm. Tacoma's ultimate haunted house. Okay. Love this that. is a uh, near the Tacoma Dome along East 25th Street. And this sounds like it's something that's consecutive. Have you been to this? I have not. No, but it looks like fun. Okay. Look at they have them basically almost every weekend in October. All Thursday, Friday, and Saturdays, it looks like. Oh, until November 4th. And only less than 20 bucks. That's not bad. Not bad at all. Okay. This looks scary, though. I wonder what's in the ultimate. Haunted house. I don't know. I love haunted houses. I think we talked about this last week. We but did. like if they're done well, you know, they could be I, really and this good. one has a look like it's done really well. I would love to check this one out. All right. I kind of want to look at the gallery really quick. What kind of scary pictures are going to pop up? What do you think are going to be the popular costumes this year? Um, Barbie. Barbie. Because the movie obviously mm -hmm, is like the mm -hmm. highest selling movie of the I'm summer. I'm sort of thinking with all this Taylor Swift news in the past week that Ooh, Taylor Swift Taylor and Travis, Travis Kelsey, Kelsey might be uh, quite a popular mm -hmm. choice. The Little Mermaid. Mm -hmm. That was a big one this year. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, pop culture wins during Halloween. I think it does too. It's just all it's an hype. easy go get. For sure. For sure. We were asking in the newsroom uh, this week some, you know, interesting costume ideas. And I sort of enjoyed this one. It's a little dark, but somebody could dress up as the bird, the Twitter bird, and do like, you know, a An blood like it's dying or something. Oh, that's because they a good idea. That was pretty funny. You and should then, do that. And then you think about all the celebrities mm. that we have lost this year, mm. you know, as you can do those costumes that are kind of a tribute to them. Yeah. Uh, Pee Wee Herman. Mm. Bob Barker would be a really easy yeah. one. Rest in peace, Bob Barker. Jimmy Buffett. Um, Tina Turner. Oh, yeah. And then yeah. Dame Edna, who was uh, very famous around, around the world and in Australia. And then, like, the floating balloons. Remember those? No. The spy balloons? No. Like, you could dress up as a balloon? Okay. I don't know. Okay, it was really big in the news. It sounds cool. I got to um, Google it. <laughs> <laughs> really cool costume ideas, though. Yeah. I love all of those ideas, especially the Twitter one. That's pretty morbid, but I... I know. It's the truth. I kind of like it, though. I think it'd be fun. <laughs> All right, we got some more events. Oktoberfest, we've got mm -hmm. one in Leavenworth and Wenatchee. I have not done either of these. Events. You have not. And what would you wear to these? Lederhosen? I, I, yeah, I've done Oktoberfest in Fremont. I know that one already passed mm -hmm. for this year, but I saw a lot of people dressed up. Yep. Here's the one for Leavenworth. And again, they also have one in Wenatchee. But these are like the next three weekends, I think, is when these take place. Fun. So you can maybe hit up both of them in all the towns. Wear your Lederhosen, get a big pretzel. Dip it in some mustard, drink some beer, love it. Have a really good time. Get a DD because that's important, and just be have merry. a great time. And have then a good time. One in Wenatchee. Enjoy as fall. Well. Yeah, yeah. So there's 
Oh, great events this weekend. So much um, going on. Fall is here. I'm going to start thinking about my Halloween costume now. I think it's time for me to finally get a pumpkin spice latte. Ooh, I think I think now it's okay because it's officially fall. Um, okay, next week is our 20th sound on. And we said we were going to do a, like a little celebration. We I, have, I think we need to go out with a bang. Not go out, but I think we need to ring in. We need like a bell or something. I don't know. I feel like it's a celebration. We need to talk about what we're going to do to make it special. And what to talk about. What should we talk I about know. in our 20th episode? We should do something that's like all 20 based. Ooh, 20... 20 something. Okay. Let's brainstorm. Let's brainstorm. That's what we're doing after like we're done we're filming. <laughs> <laughs> Let us know if you think of anything in the comments. <laughs> yes. And have a good week until then. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.